Hello everyone, it is I, James the Squirrel, and I am here with Nikki of the V. It, for you guys, it's been a couple of days. For me, it's been like six seconds. Yes, it, it's been about a day for you guys. For us, it's been like a conversation. Yeah. Um, it was Tuesday. Yes. Um, so, this episode of NXT is the usual after takeover over NXT with a lot of recapping of what happened at NXT takeover over. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear our thoughts on that, watch the video. Mm -hmm. yeah. But mostly, like, the, the few matches that they had, it was, um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to rant about something. I, we're going to do this slightly out of order. Uh, can we do this in order, please? Okay, fine. All right. So, so we start off, show all five matches in the order that they happened. Very good uh, video package, and it stopped right at the start of Chompa's beatdown. Very, very well done. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, one little problem. They uh, they did the uh, the opening intro thingy. DIY is still together. Mm -hmm. Might need to change that. Yes, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. They'll probably like during the tapings of this thing, they'll get some mm -hmm. footage of um, Champa on his own and replace that with that. Um, mm -hmm. Well, so, Champa has had some singles matches like back. Well, I, I, I'm a while. saying using modern, like his mm -hmm. current look and such. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, first match, Alistair Black. Versus Kurt Hawkins. I want to point something out. How to tell you're a jobber on the main roster. You are jobbing to people in the developmental territory. Mm-hmm. Anybody remember when Adam Rose would occasionally pop up in NXT uh, and yep. do the job down there? Yeah. How Kurt to Hawkins. know ha how to know you're getting fired the next when your contract is up? Uh, I don't know if he's getting fired. Like, he 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 does his job well. It's just that his job is to be bad at wrestling. Yeah, but uh, and I've stated this: the that, roster is packed, thing, and, and that kind of thing helped. And that kind of thing helped Heath Slater stay on the roster for years. Yes, but Heath Slater is now decent. And with I will the... say that he is about like in ring level. He is about the same as where he is, was before. He's just like funny. Is all hell. Uh, yeah, he's gotten a lot better on the mic. He's gotten yeah. a little bit better in the ring, but Kurt Hawkins has made no visible improvement. And well, that's because all matches last three minutes and he gets no offense in. Yeah, but th there's something I want to point out to you, and I've stated this is I, I stated this last week. No, not last week. I, I stated this in the um, NXT Takeover of a review, and I'm going to state it again. The roster is packed. Act. Having people like Cor Kurt Hawkins, who is filling up space, is not a good thing at this point. Yeah, but they need people to lose. If the roster is stacked, then everybody's going to win. Who's going to lose those matches? Kurt Hawkins is. There's always room for jobbers. I, I, I would happily fire Kurt Hawkins to put Alistair Black in his... In, his place, not the place of losing all the time, but his seat in the ro main roster. Mm. Anyway, you can guess who won this match. Oh, yeah. Like, because... crowd was so fucking hot for Kurt, or for uh, Alistair. Yes. Like, We've also seen way, this match in already. Way they were also really, like, they reacted really well to Kurt because when Kurt Hawkins came out, they were like, ah, oh, this fucker. So we, we've already had this match on WWE's main event. Yeah, the problem is nobody watches main event and never will. I only would... knew about that because I was watching, in, I was on the WWE's YouTube channel and it says, Alistair Black to views against Kurt Hawkins on WWE's main event. And I'm like, really? That thing's still going? No, go yeah. for it. <laughs> But yeah, so th this was a uh, this was an all right match. Kurt yep. actually got in a little bit more offense than you would expect. Yep. Um, 
because he got like no offense in during the main event match. But like here, it was a little bit longer. Uh, Alistair did his uh, springboard backflip over Kurt Hawkins. Like oh. normally, yeah, like normally, like so... Alistair does that move to someone who's on the outside. He literally flipped over this man into a seated position. My God, this man is amazing. Yeah, he, he, he did the flip, stuck the landing, and then basically dropped into a cross-legged position. And he did that again, but instead of landing behind him, he basically did a... Um, a um, um, Kind of a Pele kick? S- no, Swanton. Yeah, Not I Swanton, guess that's... Um, uh, Moonsault. That's the word yeah, I was looking moonsault, for. Yeah, Moonsault, that's the word you're looking for. Yeah. And yeah, both of those looked lovely. Up. When when he hit that first one, I was like, oh. Yeah. But yeah, Alistair beat the shit out of Kurt Hawkins in this match. Yep. And then he, and then Kurt ate a black mass. Crowd was going fucking mental. Alistair and Black is over his fuck. <laughs> I want him to take the title off Brock Lesnar. You know what? No, shut up. I want him to take the title off of Brock Lesnar. <laughs> you, you know what? I like your thinking. I really do. But I want to see, like, I want to see him win the Intercontinental title and then defend it every week and never lose it for, like, a That's year. That's fine. But also win the Universal title for Brock Lesnar. Yeah, ma- maybe move that like towards, I said before, like, give him every title. Maybe move that towards later in the year, because then you can build him to the point where everyone knows he is a beast he can take on Brock Lesnar. Yeah, like have have him be Goldberg. Just yes. have him eat everyone. He just b- beats everyone, claims the mid-card title, then claims the world title, holds them both, fucking win. Yes. And he, he, like, he loses the mid-card due to shenanigans and chicanery. Yeah. And that way you can free up the mid card belt for someone else. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. let, let let us move on to the to the worst debut I have seen in a very very long Hold time. On. Hold on, stop, stop. There's other things to talk about, and one of these things you seem pretty eager to talk about. So, uh, first off, there was the recap of the tag title match, uh, mm-hmm. and then it showed Champa's betrayal. Doctors wouldn't give any details on Johnny's condition. I still don't think they have to this point. Uh, He was last seen being loaded into an ambulance with a neck brace. Then, you want to talk about Ember Moon? (sighs) Her promo work is terrible. This is where we're going to disagree. No, it's terrible and boring. It seems like it comes from the heart. It's... This is why I think that they're like starting to come off it on the um, on the mystical stuff, because when you hear Ember Moon talk, it doesn't sound phony. Like it doesn't sound like she's reading off a script. It feels like she is just saying what she feels, which is she comes across as very earnest, which is fine. The problem is she's come to the ring multiple times wearing red contact lenses. And they've stopped that. If you watch, like, they're very, very unsubtly, like, starting to, like, take out of, take the mystical stuff away from her because she's just a good person on her own. I I, I am willing to give her a chance from now to the lead up to Brooklyn because that's when Mm -hmm. they're going to have that match. Match. Mm -hmm. If she can win me over, I will shut up about it and I will be on her side. She had. Uh, she has basically three months to convince me that she is worth a damn. Um, well, I hope you. I hope you get into her because she's probably going to take the title off of Asuka. I know, and that annoys me. I'd much rather her just drop the belt and say, "I don't need this anymore. I'm going to the main roster to get that one of those belts." You do know. You do remember that, like, arguably Asuka's best match in NXT has been against Ember Moon, right? Uh, I wouldn't say that. It, it's in the top two. It's either that or like one of the Bailey matches. Bailey matches far better. Like the match at Takeover Orlando was fucking good though. Yeah, I 
Okay. It, it was probably the stiffest women's match the WWE's ever done. Mm. Name one. Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. I think, I, uh, I'm not sure. I, I would need to go for the list. Yeah. Anyway. I did like the line at the end. Uh, time heals all wounds. Looking at her injured shoulder, but battle scars last forever. Mm-hmm. That was a nice line. Yeah, well, uh, that was okay. Yeah. And then they did a um, more recaps, first of the women's title match. Um, yep. Then they, inter- they interviewed Asuka. She says no one can stand toe-to-toe with her. And then she said in, like, the weirdest voice I've ever heard come out of her mouth, It's mine. Like, pointing at the title. And then walked like, off. It- yeah, it seems like Asuka's just having fun with this. Yes, just like... <laughs> which I love. Yeah, um, I, and I and like she this, I like... like this version of Asuka way better than like I'm so f- sick of this menial bullshit. Asuka, give me I'm having the time of my life beating up fools. Asuka. Yes, that is far better. Like a mixture between the two, depending on her mood. Yeah, like make her like you can give her a little bit of complexity to that. But still, I like this version of Oscar better. Yes. Um, there is one thing I would like to bring up. Mm-hmm. Oscar has a point. No one's been able to beat her or come yeah. close to it. The closest anybody came was Ember, and she didn't even hit her finisher. Mm. So, yeah. No one is ready for Oscar. It true, though. Mm-hmm. And, and... Like one final recap... Uh, Oh, do you have something else to say? Uh, no, no, keep going. Okay, one final recap. Roddy versus uh, Eric Young. Interview with uh, Roderick Strong says he overcomes odds. And uh, anyone who makes things personal with his family, Roddy will end them. Uh-huh. Now, we didn't really talk about this during the, uh, the review. But, like, this is how you get an underdog over who wins matches. Like, somebody who overcomes the odds. And it doesn't come across as like you're shoving him down our throat because we've gotten to know this guy. We've seen his struggle. He mm-hmm. has struggled in the ring because if you recall, like Roddy got his shit pushed in a lot by Sanity before this match. Mm-hmm. So they, they've they made him sympathetic so that once he gets the win, it feels like he has accomplished something great. So, yeah. I like it. What I don't like is this next match. I have several qualms with this whole Velveteen Dream thing. Starting with that name? Yes. Yeah, like we've talked a lot about dumb names in NXT lately. Cian Almas. Cian Almas, like too many names guy. Cassius Ono, an Asian name or a black guy first name, an Asian last name, and he's a white dude from Ohio. Yep. Uh, who else? Alistair Black was a little iffy at first. Killian Dane, mm-hmm. iffy at first. Velveteen Dream is the worst goddamn name I've ever heard. And the thing is, they're trying to make him be um, be um, like this ripoff of Prince. The print stuff doesn't bother me. That's fine. Do oh no, you want I I, I would stuff. be fine with someone doing that, mm-hmm. as long as they were good. The, okay, hang on. The match itself was fine. No, I I, I mean, like, the... it, it started off with like this this basically uh he was uh being very quick in the ring, very athletic, and then once the uh opponent Robert Anthony uh started getting a couple of shots in, like. Patrick Clark, who I will never call him Velveteen Dream, by the way. He is always Patrick Clark, and nothing they can do to uh, say otherwise will convince me. Patrick Clark just started clubbing away on him. Just... Bah, 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 bah. Eh. It was it was a good bit of character. And, uh... But yeah, this, this Velveteen... Like, Velveteen Dream is a good nickname. Er, Good is a little bit strong. It's an acceptable nickname. Eh. Could you imagine if? Could you imagine if they called Dean Ambrose, lunatic fringe, first name lunatic, last name fringe? That'd be the stupidest shit in the world. Make him a barber, called the lunatic fringe. A barber? 
fringe out of your hair. Uh, I hate you. <laughs> that is early nineties WWE booking. They named a guy Diesel, so maybe. But yeah, like uh, other than the name stuff, like I was fine with the rest of it because he's got a fucking nice elbow drop. Oh yeah, like, that that uh, that elbow drop was the best part of the match. I would go so far as to say Kyrie Hojo esque. I wouldn't put it that far. Esque. Esque. Esque meaning like similar to, not equal to. I, I if I had to if I had to rank elbow drops in terms of effectiveness, it would go Kyrie Hojo one, Patrick Clark two, uh Bailey three, Eric Young four, Zack Ryder five. Anybody else do an elbow drop? I am disappointed in you. Vehemently disappointed in you. Macho man, fuck. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll put him second behind Kyrie. I was like, really? Bailey before Macho Man? <laughs> to be fair, Bailey won her match at WrestleMania with that move. Yeah, I know, but so did. He, he won the WWE Championship with that move yeah, at WrestleMania. So, like, <gasps> but yeah, okay. Almost 30. Like, I know. I... <laughs> yeah, 29 years ago. Okay, so redo it. Uh, Kyrie, Macho Man, Patrick Clark, Bailey, Eric Young, Zack Ryder. Eh, I, I bump Zack Ryder up one. I, I, I would swap um, Patrick Clark and Bailey. Because, like you said, Bailey won the women's title at Mania for, with it. Yeah, but, like, did you see it? Like, the amount of distance Patrick Cl- covered with oh, that yeah, elbow he's... drop was he... tight. I, I, I'm willing to say he has potential. It's just mm-hmm. call him Patrick Clark. Yeah. Like, you have him do refer. That everything solved for me. Ha- have him refer to himself as I am Patrick Clark, the Velveteen Dream, him, and like yeah. maybe have like Velveteen Dream kind of stuff on his merch. And that's it. Yeah. Like have like have it right. Like have. Velveteen Dream written on his ass in big bright pink letters. Yeah, like purple and, and pink. And you're good. Yeah. You're good to go. I am on board with the Velveteen Dream experience. Also, if you do just that one thing. I, uh, also, I want to point something out. There's a picture of him on Twitter wearing like sunglasses with free lenses, and someone said, "Hey, he should give Tien back his glasses." <laughs> I laugh so much. Well, th- those are the glasses that he wore back when he did his first debut. I know, and it's amazing that someone made the TN reference. I'm a, a good reference. Master, I, I'm an anime fan, so. Mm-hmm. No yes. way. No. A like you. A so person who watches that. New Japan religiously at the moment because it's the best of Super Juniors. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. By the way, be... how did the announcers like? consistently call him Velveteen Dream without laughing. Like I would have I, I, I would have broke K Fabe and started laughing my ass off so like, quickly. <laughs> See, if uh, Corey Graves was still there, he probably would have said that and it would have still yes. been in character. Yes. Anybody remember the line, Who is this Jose and why is he always being denied? <laughs> I love that line. That was a great line. That was so good. This Corey is Graves Corey is, Graves is best. Corey Graves is in my like top three commentators of all time. I can I can get behind that statement. Like it it, it it's him Ross us um uh, like him Jr and Jerry the King and it's like bar none. I like. I would put him ahead of Lawler. Oh, I'm not saying I, in that order. I'm just saying those three. In some order. Yeah. yeah. Like, but if I, I, if I were to do an order, it'd be J- good old JR. J- Jim Corey. Ross is number one. Yeah. No getting, no getting past that. So after that, we had a recap of the UK title match. Uh, Pete Dunne got an interview. Uh, said everything was his. Yep. Cool. Uh, then... A, Recap of the NXT title match. He he is one of the UK guys who I could see going to main roster if he wanted to. 
Oh yeah, definitely. I could absolutely like he is a legit guy on the main roster. Yeah. Uh, they did an interview with Bobby Roode. Uh, said that Tommy was in his league, and that he was gonna go take some time off. Probably that- take some time off, come back at um, Brooklyn to face an opponent that will Roderick be selected. Roderick Strong. Eh. Kayfabe wise, he like I said in the last video, he was the only face to win. So yeah, he he. It, it, it's either it's him, Eric Young, or Alistair Black. Oh, I don't even know if you could put Eric Young in the conversation just yet. I, I, I'm saying, like, that if they do a number one contenders match, those are the, like, three guys I could see being in it. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Uh, but, yeah, there's a bit of a log jam right now at the top, so yep. some, something's got to give. Someone's um, got to move up to main roster. Yeah. And then... Um, by the way... Here's a here's an an interesting question. Do you think that we'll get a, a four way match at Takeover, just to kind of like give a bunch of these people like a a NXT title shot and just so that they can say they did it and then get them the fuck to the main roster? What they could do is do that and then Bobby could lose, not like he could lose the belt but not lose the match, and that gives him some like Mystique when going to the main roster, that he's one of the few guys who who has come to the main roster and didn't lose their belt. Mm-hmm. Unpinned and unsubmitted. Yeah, that kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. That that's, that's the reason why I think Oscar should have lost her match at TakeOver. Mm-hmm. It's, she, she needs that Mystique. Of being this undefeated, unpinned, unsubmitted badass. Mm-hmm. But there is one thing I would like to say. Hey. Yeah. Bobby Roode, ha- like I-, I have an idea of how they could debut Bobby Roode at um. Like, th- th- this is the hard thing. If they're gonna debut him, he has to be. It, it has to be a, a very. It has to be one of the big four, and it has to be amazing. Like glorious, one might say. I I, I, I had an idea of. Mm-hmm. So it's it, it it it's Survivor Series. It's five v four. Uh, one person, like one team, doesn't have their fifth member, and. They got like, like during the pay per view there are like there's like a se- segment of them go like it, it's like NXT guys versus um like some main roster guys who've been around for a while and they're trying to like say a a you guys shouldn't be here uh, you NXT guys shouldn't be here blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Um and like the NXT guys are trying to find one more person. Person. Like, they've asked um, Seth Rollins, but Seth Rollins is busy. They've asked other guys, and it's like, they go, who are we going to find? They hear a door open, and it's just like, one of them goes, yeah, that'll do. And um, um, they all walk out to the ring. It's like the four of them, the four people, they all turn and, like, that they're standing facing each other. They look to the ramp and then mute, piano hits. That pop will be probably the loudest we've had in a very long time. Maybe, maybe that could that could possibly work. I I worry that you're bringing in Bobby Roode and making him a face, which he does not need to do. Oh uh, no, no! But... Like, see, he is only a face is for this thing. Like he yeah, they, just like, get that big pop. Yeah, get that big pop and then during like during the match, it's like him and one other guy that is left, they win the match, and then he instantly turns on the one guy who's there. Um yeah, okay. That's fine. Yeah. Alright, so And that yeah. also then throws in a feud for the next like next couple of weeks with him and whoever that is. Hell, so, it could be Sammy, and Sammy could be the champion at that point. That could work. 
Okay. Oh God. So. Sami Zayn and Bobby Roode for the WWE title at a pay per view. What mm-hmm. indie dream is that? Crazy, crazy. So, the main event of tonight's show featured Wesley Blake. Twenty seventeen, <laughs> folks. What are we doing? What, what is this? The end is nigh. Show? The end is nigh. Run away. Run away. Drew McIntyre versus Wesley Blake. Wesley Blake had a match at TakeOver, and Cassius Ono did not. He, it, it was a dark match, but he still had one. Wesley Blake had a dark match <laughs> at TakeOver, and Cassius did not. Where the fuck was Cassius Ono? Um... I wait, wanted a Cassius Ono wait, Bulls I, I, jersey I, I, to exist, and none <laughs> happened. Wait, I have a solution for this. He was at CM Punk's place having pizza. No, he wasn't, because he was in the crowd at one point. Shut for... up! Except my head Your cannon. Your is dead. Your kayfabe is bad, and you should feel bad. I do. Ah, uh, man. As much as I like Cassius' hair, I... And as much as like an XT in general right now, like there's so many people, so who, many who like wrestlers. clogging up the top of the card right now. That that's they why don't I said they need another. But they need another like a mid card belt for NXT. Yeah, like something that something that the developmental guys can like yeah. scramble for. Like like something that the Velveteen Dream, like Wesley B- Blake and such, can fight for. That maybe like, like maybe Eric Young is currently it, holding it. Something that could be defended at house shows, like exactly. that could be a, that could be a, that could be very interesting and like bring people to these to house shows. It's like, hey, we've got this title and it changes hands at house shows. Yes. <laughs> Although and, technically the NXT title has changed hands at a house show. So what the fuck am I saying? Well, what I would do is I would say it has to be defended. And that at every NXT show, and like just every NXT show, takeover tapings, whatever. Yeah, make it like a, make it like an open challenge kind of deal where every time they have this person's in a match, the title's on the line. Yeah, that that works. I can get down with that. Yeah, like that kind of stuff, and then you can bring in like the developmental guys. You can have like, if it was around right now, I would say. Eric Young has it, and he's gonna, and he loses it to someone like, like someone who's on the cusp of making their NXT debut. Steve Cutler. I was gonna go with someone else, but sure, why not? Kona I... Reeves. Patrick Clark. Yeah, if you thought that, like. <laughs> If you thought Eric Young's credibility was hurt by a loss to Roderick Strong, imagine how much it was hurt by having him eat a loss to Velveteen Goddamn Dream. Yeah. Maybe Alexander Wolf was the person you were looking for. Yeah, let, let, let's put it on Wolf there. There you go. That's That makes things a little less dumb. Yeah, and, and we can just say Eric Young isn't there and... Um... What's yeah. his name isn't there because they've got a match like um, Eric Young match has a match later, later on the card and Killian Dane is helping Eric Young so he can't be at both at ringside yeah. both times. Yeah, and, and then right. yeah, and then he loses it because he doesn't have his backup. Right. Yeah. Okay, so Drew McIntyre versus Wesley Blake. Guess who oh. won that match? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wesley Blake's theme starts with a beer opening. Well, he is Texan. Cool. It would have been better if he was, like, honestly, it would have been amazing if he was, um, if he was from, um, I think it's like Green Bay, that kind of area. Um, what are you looking for? Paps Blue Ribbon. I think that's a Milwaukee thing. Yeah, well, M- Milwaukee. That's what I meant. Uh, yeah. Green Bay's no, in Milwaukee there too. It's a close what's a Texan beer? Um, you're an American. Tell me. 
<laughs> I don't drink though. Um, hang on, I'll think of one. Uh, a a here. Anyway, he he should be sponsored by Budweiser's in Missouri. No, hang on, I'm gonna get this. Gosh darn it, Lone Star. I don't know. Yeah, well, I think that's next year. Yeah, like what what they should do is all his merch, all of it, should be themed around different like beer brands. Because so John saying, Cena's so already done it. I was about to say, so it's basically take how he, how WWE nearly got sued by Claps Blue Ribbon for that John Cena shirt, and just have that be for all of his. And you're also making the deadly mistake of assuming that someone would buy a Wesley Blake merch. Depending on how it looked, I would. There is zero chance anybody would ever buy Wesley Blake merch. There is a lot of merch on the store There's at the moment. There's not even Alice's was... Black merch yet. Calm the hell down. Oh my god, there isn't, is there? No. I've been, like, I went to the NXT store, and, like, I was trying to find some, like, literally, I was trying to find those Cassius Oh No jerseys, because, like, I want them. Yes. And, and Cassius has nothing. Uh, like, most of the stuff, there's still Shinsuke, Samoa Joe... Like, they need they, a new they, round of merch. They, yeah, I was about to say, they really need to update their merch store because, like, it's out of date hella hard. Yeah, so um, this match was decent? Yeah, it was all right. Uh, yeah. it, made, it made Drew look very good, uh, despite the fact that Drew is only billed at 10 pounds heavier than Wesley Blake. Wesley Blake looked like a small child compared to this man. Yeah. I think uh, Wesley Blake is a bit uh, heavy. He's doughy. Yeah, but Drew is more tall. Most of his weight is in, um, like, bone mass. Yeah. So there was this one part where, uh, was, like, a lot of this match had uh, Blake putting uh, McIntyre's left arm into different submission holds. Mm. Which, yeah, kind of an interesting story, but... Like, Drew ended up powering through all of them. Like, there was this one crazy spot where uh, Blake had Drew in a Kamura lock. And Drew picked up Blake with his one free arm and just set him on top of the top rope. Yeah, like... Drew Christ, you are strong. I, I, I have known how good Drew McIntyre is for, like, a, a good while. I had a feeling he was going to come back to WWE at some point. I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't know it was going to be this soon. I thought it was going to be, like, maybe, I, mm -hmm. like, partway through this year he was going to get the call up and then maybe return at the Rumble. Yeah, and I didn't think he'd be this, like, amazing right away. Because I've seen some of his stuff on, like, like WCPW. WCPW. Yeah. ICW. I saw this one part where uh, McIntyre, or at the time, Galloway, like, booted this dude off a rafter in ICW. Well, it is ICW. <laughs> yeah, shit's nuts, but, like, <laughs> like, he literally, like, booted a guy off a second row balcony into the crowd. Yeah, like... They're fucking nuts over there. I love indie wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> it can be great sometimes. Yeah, and, and sometimes you have what happens to some person and they get bloody scalped by a ladder <laughs> god that injury was gruesome uh, are we still talking about Jordan Devlin yes <laughs> <laughs> so um that was pretty like the match was really good what was the ending again I think it was like just Claymore um, kick done yeah they, they actually teased the future shock <gasps> oh his DDTs are so good yeah it's it's a shame that Dean Ambrose basically stole his finisher. You know what I think is going to happen is um, McIntyre's like main finisher is going to be that Claymore kick. It, but um, he's going to use the Future Shock DDT when they don't stay down for the Yeah, the Future the Shock will be his super finisher. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's fair. Because, like, you've seen how they've booked the Dirty Deeds... Like it's the most dead, it's the most deadly move in sports entertainment today. Well, I'll tell you what I would do if, like, if Dean Ambrose gets is still holding the Intercontinental and they bring in Drew up, up Dean kick, 
Dean hits his DDT. Drew kicks out. Out. Drew hits his kick. Dean kicks out. Out. Drew hits his DDT. Dean stays down. You know what? I'd be fine with that because it would be basically one guy selling his own move. And I hate it. Like, one of my biggest wrestling pet peeves. I can never stand it when somebody gets hit with their own finisher and kicks out at two. I, I'm okay hey. if it's like if it happens partway through a match. match yeah, but if it's that's... a good ending, have them yeah. go down to their own move. Yeah, you're killing your own finisher. Like it, it bugs the shit out of me. With submission one... moves, I'm fine with it because it could be it's you, you can write that off as they don't know how to perform it as good as I do. Yeah, but when it's a power one... slam or a DDT or something, mm -hmm. you're going to do yeah. yeah, there's one time that I've seen somebody actually stay down for their own move. And as weird as this seems, TNA got this right. Yep. Because there was one match. It was, I think, AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels, I want to say. Eh, it might have been. And, and Daniels hit Styles with a Styles clash. Styles and Styles, down. And Styles stayed the fuck down. Yeah, it's like, if you get hit with your own move, you like if you stay down and take that pin, and it, sure, you lost, but it makes your move still look good. So when you hit it next, next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah, looks good. Well, yeah, so McIntyre hit the claim, or the Yakuza kick. They're starting to call it the Yakuza kick now, so I'll okay. go along with that. Oh, there was one other really nice move in this. Uh, uh, McIntyre went to the ropes with Blake right behind him. Drew turned around and surprised him with a pop-up sit-out power bomb. Yeah. That was <laughs> yeah, he did. Move. That was awesome. Only got two, though. Damn <laughs> shame. But, yeah, other than that, it was, it was an all right match. Made McIntyre look good. Made Wesley seem... Eh. He's viable as, like, another guy who can lose on NXT nowadays, I guess. Yeah. So, that's fine. Where's Buddy Murphy? I think he's he was... in developmental still. I think he's gone there to, like, figure out his own... Like, his character. Yeah, because I, I remember when they did the Australia tapings after one particular takeover. I think they had him... I think there was a match between Dillinger and Wesley versus um, versus Bobby Roode and the Drifter. Mm. Um, and I only remember that because it had the great line from Corey Graves. How do you drift to another continent? <laughs> yes. Um, so we, we've um, we, we've he, here's a fun thing because we've mm -hmm. Buddy Murphy is Australian. For the Australian shows, you could buy one ticket, get one free, and it was bring a buddy. Buddy. <laughs> the promotion was nice. called Bring a Buddy, and it had like it was a picture of Buddy Murphy smiling, I mean, like thumbs up, and it was like buy one get one free, and I was like, oh, I wish I could go to that, but at that time I was still training to be like referee and such. And, like, literally multiple things were happening where I just couldn't make the time to go to it, which yeah. pisses me. If you could have got, you would have gotten a picture of Bring a Buddy, I would have, like, like sent you a high five through the post. Uh, let, let's see. I can. I, I will link this to you, and this will probably be a link in the description as well. Oh, neat. But either way, that's all for, the, for this episode of NXT. Yes. So they've got about 12 weeks to build until, or I think around that time, give or take a couple weeks, to build towards taking over Brooklyn 3, which is it's going to be a hell of a show. And if I know, if I read the spoilers correctly, they've Don't done... do it. No, I, I mean only like where they've taped to. They've taped <laughs> basically the rest of this month and part of next month. Ah, okay. Yes. So that'll that'll get them some, some time in the future. Yeah. All right. So that's okay. all for now, I think. Yep. See ya, guys, next week for another weekly episode of it.
the Haymakers NXT podcast also, review thingy. Also, since Lucha Underground is coming back next week, fuckers. Um, Nikki. Go. Yes. I have a question. I'm going to have to marathon that, and then we're going to have to do a new show, aren't we? Um, well, here's the thing. Uh, I'm going to be bringing back my uh, Lucha Underground Power Rankings to talk about that, which is why I brought that up, because I'm going to be making one for as we stand right now before we come back from the mid-season break. Yep. So, if you want to do one... Well, we could have your power rankings being the main focus and then talk a little bit in depth on certain things instead of it just Let's being a review because the because Lucha Underground is much more about story, so we don't want to spoil said story. Right. Anyway, we will see you next week. We'll figure it out. Bye.